When it comes to framing your artwork, the frame is just as important as the artwork and selecting the right mat and frame can be daunting. So Shai is back with some great tips for us. Framing is so important to artwork because a piece of artwork can really, you know, be made uh, or broken by the framing that you choose. I think one of the really key things that people seem to sometimes forget is the frame is part of the artwork uh, composition, if you will, once you put everything together. So it's really important to, you know, pick the right frame, pick the right matting, and we're going to talk about all of that right now. Okay, well, let's, let's actually start by talking about the matting. Uh, very important, and people yeah. might not realize how it works and how to make it big impact. So, you know, mats are, if you can, you know, think about it kind of like the bangs to your face, right? So your face is what it is, the art is what it is, but depending on how your hairstyle is or your bangs are, it can completely change the look of the artwork. I mean, right behind me, you see, I have two small prints with huge mats around them. And what that does is it actually draws your eye in, makes the artwork look a lot more important, a lot more prevalent than they would be without that. But the thing to understand about the mats trays is that there are so many different kinds. The least expensive type of mat that you're going to find is going to be like uh, paper mats. So paper mats are the least expensive. The problem with paper mats is, is that they're acidic. So, you know, when you uh, uh, frame a piece and you have the mat around it, what tends to happen over time is that the artwork tends to yellow because the acidity in the mat yellows the artwork. If you have a bigger budget, is there a mat that you would suggest? Acidic mats tend to be those mats that you get in the frames that you buy in the big box stores, so they're already matted. It's the cheapest. But when you're looking for a, uh, you know, a piece that you really want to care for, invest in, it's going to be the uh, conservation mat. And depending on the quality, the thickness, the bevel, that of course changes the price as well. So when you go to your framing place, you really want to talk that through with the framing professional to make sure that you choose the right one. So mats and colors. You know, Trace, I have this one piece here, which is an espresso print of this particular piece in different mats and in different frames, but you can see how just changing the mat really completely changes the look of the entire piece. Now let's get to the frames. What do we need to know? The one thing that I want people to realize and understand and really kind of put inside their minds when they're out for framing is you choose a frame for the artwork, not for your home or not for the rest of the frames in the house. That's so, so important. You don't get your hair cut so that you look good next to Leo. You get your hair cut so you look good next to you. It frames your face, right? Think about it that way. So you really want the frame to speak to the piece. Now, the frame should always be smaller than the mat that kind of draws your eye in again. But the difference in frames is also really important to you. So imagine, for example, you know, have a really contemporary piece. So this is pretty simple. It's just a wood frame. Mm -hmm. It's nice and deep. But what we can do with this is we can add something called a fillet. So when you're out in your framing professional, ask them about fillets. Fillets are, they almost look like small frames like this. And what they do is they actually sit inside the existing frame and it gives an added dimension. So another layer and almost like a frame within a frame. And depending on the artwork, of course, you know, let's say, for example, you have a really modern home, but this piece of artwork that you're wanting to frame is quite traditional. So what do you do? You know, you may think, well, I don't want to put a traditional frame up in my home. Nowadays, I mean, there are so many different options that you can go for. So look at a frame like this, T. This has the beautiful detail that a more traditional frame has. But if you look at it, it's in a very high gloss white. So that gives it a really modern feel. So this is a way to kind of answer, you know, the, in terms of do I need it for, uh, you know, do I want it to look traditional, but I also need it to work with my design concept. These are all things that you want to think about. And then the last, last, last thing, T, that I want to talk about is, of course, glass. This is a big one. So if you look at the one I have here, it's an example of glass, uh, you know, UV glass or museum glass versus regular glass. If you look at it, T, it's a little hard with the light, but you have non-reflective versus reflective. And this is also really important for, you know, I have these pieces here, I'm next to a window. I wanna make sure that when the sun comes in, it doesn't fade my artwork. So I'm gonna use UV glass or museum glass versus a, a, a cheaper or, uh, you know, a non-protected glass. Really important. And I got to say, I thought Ozzy was chill, but your dog has to be the best oh. made for TV <laughs> dog there is. She is like, I'm in the shot, I'm staying here. So I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> 
She's a little bit like Daddy. Just a little bit. Thank you so Shout much for those little tips. Bye. That was really good.